pull anything that's not vanilla that you wouldn't want to be seen if you were running for mayor off of your Facebook profile. Thank you for being on here. I've never really seen, I don't think any of us have ever seen an environment like the one that we're in right now, where people are so divided. I've never seen people dislike each other or so angry with each other than they are right now. There's a lot of animosity and adversarial nature going on out there in the public arena. There's you know tons of reasons for that, and I'm not really here to get into the reasoning behind it. But I will tell you this, because we are suddenly very limited and probably will be for the foreseeable future with in-person contact, because of that, our online presence and how we present ourselves on Facebook, how we present ourselves on our websites, how we present ourselves on Instagram, which quite frankly, if you aren't in those places, you really don't exist right now because there's no other place to really be. So if you're just on there posting something once a week about one of your listings and watching everybody else's posts and not really interacting or engaging in any way, shape or form, understand you're kind of invisible. The lowest producing agent is the secret agent. <laughs> you know, the agent that no one really knows exists. So it's very important that we are out in front because that is all we're limited nowadays. It's very, very difficult to be out in person with people right now. I mean, you know, some people are doing it, some aren't. But even with me saying that, I think what goes in your head is, well, I don't know if that's okay or not. And if I did do that, should I even be talking about it? That's the political charge nature of today's environment. What I really want and what I've seen is I realize it's a tough time to be alive. I do. It is. This is very challenging. It's, I mean, mind you, we're not getting drafted to go to World War II. It's not that bad. There's no draft. We're not being conscripted into the military and we're having to go fight for our lives. But we are having to kind of stay home, <laughs> you know, and watch Netflix. So for our generation, that's pretty challenging. So the, <laughs> but, but understand it is difficult because it's us doing stuff we don't want to do. So because of that, what we do is we tend to like explode out onto social media. This is something I want to talk about. And this might be earth shattering to some of you, but we need to be very careful about your online presence in the public, probably more careful than you're being. And I'm talking to every single one of you, because what you put out there about yourself on social media is basically now what we used to call 10 years ago, this old fashioned clunky thing that we used to call a website. So that used to be like a modern thing, a website. Now it's kind of like MySpace, like a website. What are you talking about? You just have an online presence on social media. Like that's your new website. And that's where most of your business is gonna come from, guaranteed, 5,000 times more than any website. That's for sure. Because you're gonna generate and grow relationships from that online presence. In fact, there's a strong argument, guys, that we're not gonna do it in person anymore. Remember how you used to go to church every weekend and meet people and grow relationships? Remember those days? Well, we'll see it 50 years from now, you're not saying the same thing. That may not come back. You do realize, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not here to scare you, but if this stays up as long as people seem to want it going, new habits get set for social behavior. So the idea that we're gonna be having a lot of face-to-face, in-person contact may really change as these new habits set. I'm sure most of you have thought of this before, but as this continues to go and it's now looking like we got months more of this, that's enough to change an entire society's behavior like has happened in Southeast Asia over the last 15 years, because they've been experiencing pandemics there for a very long time and they have changed how they behave in public. Most of their interactions, certainly from a business sense, is online. It's virtual because it's safer and it's socially respectable. Now, I'm not saying I believe in that or I advocate for that. I don't get into that. My opinion doesn't matter. What I do get into is we have to adjust how we play the game as the pieces are moved around. Does that make sense? And right now, especially right now, and in the foreseeable future, it seems like that's how we're gonna have to exist. So please understand how we present ourselves online, that's reality. So if you run around, I mean, I know you've all seen people do it. I know you've all seen real estate agents do it. Out there posting negative things about another political party. Out there posting positive things about the political party you believe in. Out there attacking the governor. Out there attacking the president, 
out there attacking certain types of people. Make me wear masks. Don't wear masks. Blah, blah, blah. Complaining, griping, whining. That's how you're present. Can you imagine going to a real estate agent's website to check them out, to see if we want to call them to list their property with us. And all we see is a bunch of complaining, whining about society today, complaining about the governor, complaining about the president, complaining about masks, venting, telling stories about what they went through. Here's what happened to me today. Oh my gosh, really putting it all out there because it's so important for people to know. It's important we talk about it. Okay, thank you. Our society thanks you. Your business doesn't, your family doesn't, your retirement doesn't, but thank God for our society, you felt the need to vent publicly. I can't imagine what would happen if we all missed it. Does this make sense? So understand this. If you feel the need to publicly bash a political party, let's say you want to bash, who do you want? You want to go after Trump or Governor Newsom? Which one? I don't care. Let's go after Governor Newsom. Okay, if you choose to bash Governor Newsom or say this is stupid because we aren't gonna to get to go to school, which you may fully be right and I may fully agree with you. But if you choose to do that, understand that in politics, if someone wins an election and they win with 54% of the vote, that's a landslide. If they win with 55% of the vote, that's a record. Okay, that's, that's Ronald Reagan victory. That means 45% of the vote did not vote for that person. In fact, voted against that person oftentimes. So when you are saying something negative, you're always gonna offend almost half the people. So why do it? Why limit? So if I attack Governor Newsom, all the people that love Governor Newsom, now we're gonna be offended on my social media profile. So why are we alienating half of the public? Because I guarantee you, if you do that, they're not going to want to use you for real estate services, not in this environment. So why are we out there alienated half of our target market? Why are we out there attacking half of our clients, limiting our client pool down? And I think you've all seen it. We've all seen certain real estate agents out there that are extremely vocal and get out there and, and have very strong opinions that are often controversial. And all they're doing is alienating a large percentage of their potential client base. It does them no good. They don't gain any ground with it. If they're one of the people that likes the people, it's not gonna, someone's gonna call them to use them because of that. We are speaking in the public arena, much like a politician would. So we have to be diplomatic and be careful and watch our presence, watch our optics, so we don't offend people. So I don't care who you agree with. I mean, what you, your private beliefs are your private beliefs and you're entitled to make them public. You have that constitutional right. Actually, under the Bill of Rights, an amendment to the Constitution gives you the freedom of speech and you can say whatever you want. However, my advice is to not say whatever you want. My advice is to be diplomatic and have a filter so you sell more real estate and earn more income. That's my advice. You do not have to take it. That also, and this is gonna be touchy because I'm gonna talk about religion, be careful. If you put out there towards one religion, I believe that and I realize there's a lot of religions that are designed to spread the religion. I am religious myself and it's designed to spread it so more people can get the enjoyment from the or religion, the benefits, the peace, the et cetera from it. But do understand if you start putting a specific religious denomination out there, you may offend people from other denominations. And this depends on where you live, how diverse is your religious environment, all of that matters. But do understand if you put religious or the old, the old adage is putting religion and politics out in social media, you do that, you know, you do it in a non-diplomatic fashion where you really assert a certain belief about your belief or your position in either of those arenas, understand you run the risk of alienating the people that believe differently. And unless it's truly your intention, to only provide real estate services to those people, okay, that's up to you. You can totally do that. I don't advise it. I think there might be some fair housing violations in there, at least with the religious. But understand if, if your intention is to you know, generate as much income as possible, I would probably try to avoid those conversations, at least if they're polarizing. So coming out and saying, hey, you know, this whole mask thing is tough. 
if you need them, here's a place you can get some masks or, you know, that's fine. You're coming from contribution, you're helping. But if you're out there saying, hey, you should all wear a mask or you're gonna go to hell, or if you wear a mask, you're a government lackey or whatever, you know what I mean? You're, you're, that's getting too far to one side. And believe it or not, that happens a lot right now. So if our goal is to generate business from people that we've met, people in our sphere of influence, people at least know who we are. The way we do that is we stay in contact with them. Right now, a wonderful way to do that is through social media. It's free, it's easy, it kills a lot of birds with one stone, and you can come from contribution, you can help people, but be careful, that gun also can point right back at you. If you start getting too vocal out there, and, and I get it, I mean, I mean, I'll be the first to tell you, when the governor said, hey, you know, there's gonna be no school this fall and you get to deal with your own kids, I was like, I mean, I wanted to throw my TV out the window, you know? Like, I'm like, you take my kids, I don't wanna take my kids. And uh, so like that's, you know, I think my wife's on this too, that's probably terrible. But I'm not gonna go vomit that on social media, you know, and turn around and, and alienate all of these people that may think it's better and safe to stay at home. You know, I'm not saying I don't agree with that to some degree either, but the point of the matter is that's a very touchy opinion that can really harm us, right? The other thing that I really want you guys to do too, especially you younger folks out there, be careful with what you put online. If I'm gonna check a realtor, if I'm Joe Schmo and I want to decide, and this, I did this the other day, I was looking at some investment property in another state. I didn't know a realtor in this one particular area but I needed one to work with, right? So I go on to Zillow, I go on to Agent Finder. I hope you all know how to do this because this is valuable. Don't ever ask for a referral. This is how you find referrals, right? You go to the Agent Finder and you type in your city and your state in Zillow's Agent Finder. Yes, I said go to Zillow and use it. This is the best feature Zillow has. You go to Agent Finder and you type in the city and the state and it'll give you all the best agents in that. And then you can look through them and see how many they sold and and all that kind of stuff. It, it's really, it's really neat. So what I did is then I saw one. This guy looks pretty good. Kind of, kind of what I'm after. Sells about the types of houses because it tells all the houses they sell that are reported with Zillow. Uh, this guy seems like he does exactly what I need. But I'm not done there. Where do you think I went next? I went to Facebook and I checked him out. You know how to check someone out on Facebook? What you do? Search their name and see when they come up and look up all their information and see all the crazy devil stuff that they've done on there. So you don't want to use them because they probably have devil worshiping stuff on their face. Yes, devil worshiping. That's right. Sean really? got it. You go through <laughs> their photos, man. You know what you're looking through in their photos? Devil worshiping, always bad, unless you're into that. Maybe you're into that, who knows? But the, <laughs> but usually a bad thing. <laughs> the other thing you might see <laughs> is what we call the red solo cup. You know those plastic yes. red cups? Yep. Yeah, if you see some of those, we got problems because you know what they're doing. Woohoo! They're just part. I mean, this is someone who is so unintelligent and that they're going to put party pics on their website because that's what their Facebook page is. It's their website. I mean, I don't care if you have a good time. I don't care if you have a social life. You can do all that stuff. But you're in real estate now. So be real careful with making that stuff available to the public. Hide it. I wouldn't even make it visible to your friends. Like, I, I don't even understand why you have that stuff up there. There's some personal social gratification that you get from putting incriminating evidence of all your poor decisions in the public arena. I don't know, but maybe you are. My job is to be your business consultant, not to be your personal social life consultant, okay? And I'm saying pull anything that's not vanilla that you wouldn't want to be seen if you were running for mayor off of your Facebook profile. Get rid of it. I'll tell you right now, be very aware because everybody, that's how they check you out. 10 years ago, they used to Google your name. They don't do that much anymore. Now they check out your Facebook page, your personal one, and they go back through your photos as far as they can. So look, see what's there because that's how you're presented. That's, I mean, think about it. If you're gonna check out an agent, if you, I mean, I, I know you're not gonna hire another agent to sell your house, but if you were, you might check out their Facebook profile and see how they look, see how they're presented. And guess what? You're always gonna check their personal page first because that's how you see the real nitty gritty. That's how you see how they really did. So we always check the personal page first, right? And then I would want there, just an aside, because it shocks me. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little negative now. 
I can't help it. I got to go there. When I talk about tech, I get negative. I don't know why. <laughs> but if you look on their personal page, right underneath their profile photo, you know, you got that big banner photo, right? And then that's Sean laying sideways on a cat, on a couch with a cat, a jungle cat, like a big white Bengal tiger like that. See him? That's Sean right there. And then, uh, <laughs> And then there'll be a little personal, <laughs> a little personal profile photo. And then below that, it'll say, you know, inspirational statement about yourself if you choose to put that in there. But below that, it'll actually say where you live and where you work. Okay. What you want to do where it says where you work, what do you put there? What you put there is not Keller Williams Realty. What you put there is Sean Cardoza Real Estate. It's got to be a link to your business page. We don't need a link to the brokerage. We don't need to send people away from your page to a place where all the other agents reside. We need to keep them with you. So they should go to your business page, which should put you in the best light humanly possible, right? That should look very good. There should be evidence that you sell nice houses there, shows that you're up to date, maybe some video on there somewhere, you looking professional. And that's all that is. That business page really serves two purposes on Facebook. Number one, it's when people go to your personal page, they want to check you out to see and make sure you look professional. That's the one reason for a business page. The second reason for a business page is if you want to do paid advertising, if you want to boost posts or you want to retarget Facebook ads, both cost a little bit of money, but it really at this point in time has never had any other value than that. So organic posts, for example, on your business page, that you put out there and you share and stuff like that, that's a waste of everybody's time. Don't do that. If you don't believe me, just do it and see what happens. Nothing will happen. <laughs> You'll get like two likes and it'll be your mom and your sister because no one wants to see that crap. <laughs> you know, just to let you know. So no, you know, no one really wants to see your open house ad on Facebook. So does that make sense? So you won't get a lot of engagement for that. So that's the two reasons we have it. So that online presence needs to be professional and we do want them to see you, right? I mean, if you go to like my Facebook page, you're not gonna really get to know anything about me. All you're gonna see is, wow, this is what it would look like if Brian ran for president, right? It's like family and happiness and some vacations, maybe a little bit of real estate, a little bit of what I do in there kind of mixed in, but it's very vanilla and that's really, really how it should be. So you can let them in to see your family. You can let them in to see your hobbies. That's great. Like Spencer, you've got stuff on there about riding horses. Excellent. You know, that's good stuff. Like showing people, so it allows people to engage. Like Sean's a pilot. So there's stuff on there about Sean flying. Good, safe stuff, not gonna offend anybody. You know, that's good. It, it, it tells people about your hobbies, gives them something to relate to, to remember you by, to engage you. Putting your family out there is always good. That kind of stuff's great. It's when we start getting controversial with our behaviors, right? Right now, you partying in large groups of people, probably the most not well received by a lot of our public. Some of the public will say, yeah, that's right. You go get it. Forget these guys. This is all stupid. You should be out there with lots of people. And they may be right. I don't know. But I certainly know a large group of the population is going to say that's socially irresponsible and you shouldn't be doing that right? So we got to watch that. So we have to watch our optics at all time. We're in real estate. We run our own businesses. We are our own business owners. Even though you all work for real estate brokerages, understand you're independent contractors. You file your taxes on your own, right? If they don't like Spencer, they'll go to Sean. So we have to make sure that we always watch that online presence. Does anybody have any thoughts on that? So. That's probably me. I was waiting to see if someone else was going to say something, but I do, I don't have any comments on that, but I do have the whole, you know, Black Lives Matter. I was very apprehensive about posting anything about it because yeah. you're, you know, the people are pro and con and, you know, things like that. So I wanted to know your opinion on it. Boy, that's a, who is that? I can't tell who that is. It says iPhone. This is Brittany, Cardo's Real Estate Group. Oh, okay. Hey, Brittany. That is a great one, man. You're right. The black slide. And that one stumped me. You know what I mean? You know, everybody was putting those black screens, those black, uh, they called it blackout or something. There was a day, I didn't even know what was happening. All of a sudden I'm like, what's going on with my newsfeed? There's all this black, you know, like people just putting black boxes. I think it was just on Instagram. I don't remember it on Facebook, but I saw it on Instagram one day. And by the time I figured it out, it was pretty much, you know, 90% through the day. 
for ICC, I talked to our uh, our marketing person. She works in a house with us. And I go, hey, what do we do on that? And she goes, I didn't know what to do, so I didn't do anything. I was scared because she knows how I feel about offending certain percentages of the population. But if you don't do it, it feels like, well, you think if we don't participate, does that mean that we don't think Black Lives Matter? Or, you know, I didn't, I didn't quite know how this was going to be perceived. And this is a judgment call. My judgment call was step out of it. If I don't know where to go with it, because I don't, my goal is not to push any political agenda. My goal through social media is to promote the company and not offend anybody. <laughs> so I just backed out of it and didn't do anything because I was afraid that if I said, okay, Black Lives Matter, here's my black screen, that now there's this other faction that is so angry with the movement that I will offend them. So I threw my, I would be throwing into a political party or I'd be throwing into a political movement, which I think it has now turned into a political thing. It's being picked up by one political party and pushed and the other political party is, is against it. That's the reason I stayed out of it is I, I didn't want to get mixed up in all that. Nor do I feel like I really understood it. Are we talking about the movement? Are we talking about that political group? There is an actual official Black Lives Matter group. I have no idea what they actually stand for. I haven't looked into that at all, so I'm out. So to me, I stay out. Uh, that's yeah. what I do. I stay absolutely stay out of it just to, just to not upset that apple cart because I don't think there's a lot of room for you to win by participating. Right. It was really weird because I had a few people actually reach out to me and ask me, you know, hey, are you pro or con, you know, Black Lives Matter? And I was like, I was really taken back by that question because it was like, well, because I'm not posting anything about it, you think that I'm against it. And not only that, but like my son is half black, you know? <laughs> and I was like, I don't really, it was actually a couple clients who asked mm -hmm. me if, you know, cause I hadn't posted anything about it and they know my son. And I was like, I just choose to stay out of it you know like i'm very for you know everyone having a beautiful life and living their best lives and things like that and we actually live by ld so we were right where all the signs were yeah it was like it was really weird because usually you know politics or things like that i kind of don't let them into my home but like this was like creeping in it was super weird yeah i actually had a few people reach out to me too the same thing and Again, I try to stay neutral on that stuff. Everyone's different. The reason I stay neutral is because, man, that stuff's private. The only people know that stuff are my real, real close friends and my family, you know? And even then, I find that it's best to kind of keep it to myself because it usually ends up in arguments. So, you know, I mean? nothing good ever even comes out of talking about it, it seems like. So, typically do in that, and I did. I We had a client reach out. Uh, Sean, you don't know this, but I had a client reach out and you know, we have a lot of training materials and training videos at ICC. And the statement was there, there wasn't enough uh, diversity of the individuals in those videos. And, and, and come to find out there wasn't. I agree. It was not an accurate representation of our clientele or, or the population or anything. I just never paid attention. And it came to me, and I, you know, it's something we're going to work on and change because I certainly don't want to have that phone call again. You're talking about our marketing? Uh, like our marketing, marketing templates? The coaching? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it was interesting. I mean, it wasn't, no one was angry. It was just like, a, hey, heads up, you know, you might want to. What's that? It's something we're like thinking of and thinking that we are a certain way or the other. We're just not thinking of it. I mean, it, it's right. definitely oh, yeah. a sad thing that, that we have to do whatever we can to be careful. But it is something that obviously it's, we right. need to be careful for everyone. Cool. I mean, I see the point too, because if you don't have the conversation, we're not aware. So the whole point is to make people aware, right? So I get that too. Like, I mean, there's like this weird, I get it. But again, I'm in the business. I mean, I'm assuming I'm not, but you guys are in the business of selling real estate. And that's what I really want to be about, right? So my, so when these things come up, my response, Brittany, would be something along the lines of, well, I don't, what do you think? What do you think? How should I feel about it? I'm still learning. I mean, you know, stuff's coming in every day about this, you know? I'm hearing, all, you know, I'm hearing all different types of allegations. Half the news gets retracted the next day, so I don't know. So what do you think? Okay, that sounds like pretty good belief to me. That's, you know, I'm, I'm still figuring this thing out. So being less opinionated, being, I mean, I honestly, I think probably the entire country could do itself a favor by going to extremes with their opinions a little bit less. 
you know what I mean? And being a little bit more open-minded <laughs> about everything would probably reduce the hostility and the adversarial nature out there. And I think we should be doing that when we represent our own business publicly online is being less adamant and less extremist in our opinions out there and just more focused on seeking to understand other people's opinions rather than forcing our own on others. So being good listeners, but being less about talking and putting our opinions out is probably a safer way to be. So we can still engage, we can still listen, we can still seek to understand, but we're gonna be doing a little bit less of putting ourselves in a particular camp that's adversarial to a large percentage of our potential client base. That would be my advice with it. Because I think the Black Lives Matter, that one did stump me for a couple days and I just kind of kept watching it and who knew? Next thing I know, I'm like, what is Black Lives Matter? Are they taking over Portland? Are they, are, you know, like what's happening? I didn't even know what it was. Then I find out it's peaceful and this and that, and all these different news coming out every single day. So I just coasted through that one. And I try to stay that way and keep my political beliefs personal and away from my business. And think about it, I mean, what if American Airlines was out there telling everyone to wear a mask all the time or you're an idiot? What if McDonald's was out there telling everyone that black lives matter and if you don't agree with their position, you're un-American? They would never do that because McDonald's and American Airlines are relatively intelligent corporations and they would never alienate half of the client base or half of the population of the United States of America. They just wouldn't do that. They would tow a diplomatic line. And there's a reason for it, because it increases their profitability and their prosperity for their business. So if you care about your business's profitability and prosperity, keep it diplomatic. Keep it politically correct. Watch what you put out there. Keep it vanilla. Keep it vanilla. So what I always say is, hey, if you were running for city council, would you want that out there? And if the answer is no, man, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't put it out there. Because the goal is to not offend many people, if anyone at all, with what we put in the public arena. Thoughts? Hey, uh, basically, yeah, the three hobbies that I focus on in life, uh, one that keeps you creative, one that keeps you in shape, and one that makes you money. So mine's one that makes me money is real estate, one that keeps me creative, I like to play music, and one that keeps you in shape, the gyms or when it's open running something like that. So I try to focus that on social media by posting, by keeping it in one of those three hobbies, either a real yeah. estate thing, Great. something creative for something that keeps you in shape and it kind of keeps everything on a positive path, you know? Absolutely, all that's positive. It all helps me get to know you. There's nothing negative about that. I mean, yeah. you're not really giving anything away. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not like losing any of your privacy by talking about going running or, you know, music and things like that. So I love that. I mean, that's perfect. And, and it gives like you content, better. unlimited better. content, you know, on all three of those. I think that's excellent. So finding three things like that is just simple as that. I, I think it's great, Justin. It's wonderful. And then of course the best content, Justin, is when you have your first baby. Yes, family, definitely family as well. I, I, I pepper those in uh, family pictures. Yeah, too, so. yeah, ba babies. Anytime you need some social interaction, just throw a baby out there and you get, you get lots of it. That's for sure. The, uh, find well. somebody else's baby. My dog. Well. Yeah. <laughs> just pretend it's your baby. The, uh, <laughs> I get lots of it. Lots of interaction from that. So, yeah. all right, guys. Well, if you guys don't have anything, you guys were kind of quiet today, but that's one thing I wanted to make sure we got out there and talked about your online presence. So go through it. Make sure your online presence on Facebook, on Instagram presents you the way it should be. Make sure you're there. Make sure you're attending to it and make sure you're making repeated contacts with the people you know on those networks. Because I'll tell you right now, there's a lot of business to be made by working through those. And just make sure we present ourselves in a very diplomatic way online, especially during these times. All right? All right, guys, so I'm gonna let you out of here a couple minutes early today. And we will see you at the same time on the same day next week. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you.